If you've ever wanted to own any of our collections, now is the time to make that purchase. I can't guarantee that these collections will be available next year. Check out our new program for ownership. Believe it or not, it'll save you a lot of money. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com and you can learn all about it there. That's oldtimeradiodvd.com and Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah to all and to all a happy and a prosperous new year. Give the gift that gives on giving. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jake Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Christmas presents. It is 2 p.m. December 21st. Four days before Christmas in the Depression year of 1931. On a city street corner in North Texas, a man dressed as Santa Claus suddenly leaves his post beside a large red pot labeled Help the Poor. Shivering with cold, he enters the newly opened building of the Panhandle Equity Bank and approaches the bank guard. Say, Master, do you mind if I stay here a few minutes, warm up a little? I sure don't. I've been watching you through the window. Don't know how you stood it as long as you did. Oh, this Santa Claus office pretty warm at first, but then the cold sort of creeps in on you. How long do you expect you to stand out in that? Oh, eight to two. Six hours, that's all. Well, it's uh, two o'clock right now. You can go home. Yeah, not till my relief man shows up, I can't. Can't wait till he gets here. Some money in the pot out there. Oh. Well, why don't you wait right in here till you see him? Well, I was hoping you'd say that, because I'm sure... Oh, there he is now. Just drove up in the car. Oh, he can't leave a car parked there in front of the bank. There's a time limit on parking. Well, I think he's just wondering why I'm not there. I better go out and... Oh, he sees me. He's coming in. Howdy. Howdy. Was wondering when you get here. God let me come in and warm up. I hope your Santa Claus suit is warmer than his. We'll be closed up by the time you need warming. I don't think I'll get very cold. I got a cool 45 in my pocket pointer right for you, Billy. Now, don't move, boy. Don't move, he said. Keep your hand away from your gun. You, you, you guys are pulling the stick up. No kidding. You figure that all out by yourself, stupid? Let's make it a nice, quiet stick up, huh? Just walk to the rear of the bank with us. Take us through the door to the money in the vault. Now, go on. You, you'll never get away with this. You're just trying to attract any attention. You never lived to know whether we're doing not. All right. Open that door. The girl by the desk has to open it. It's button control. Well, I tell her you won't in. Uh, me, Miss Keene... I'm sorry, Mr. Lovett. Your Santa Claus friend's coming in with you? Yeah. Oh, it's so busy. I didn't even notice it. Something wrong, Mr. Lovett? You look kind of sick. You'd be more than sick if you let out one yell. They've got guns in their pockets, Miss King. What? Watch your mouth, sister. Nobody else can see us now. Take his guard. <laughs> I've got it. Now, sister, whether he lives or not is up to you, understand? What do you want me to do? Open the case of those money trays. Get to it. All right. You got the sack. Tell her what to put in it. Stuff it into your jacket when you're through. All right. And remember, sis, one yak and this jerk gets it. All right, all right. Go on. Come on, step in the sack. What are you going to do when you leave? Come on, fast. What do you mean? We'll, we'll, we'll give you a chance to get away. I mean, we, we, we won't yell or anything until you're gone. Honest. Oh, yeah, that's real nice of you. Maybe you ought to be wearing the Santa Claus suit instead of me. You think I'm going to fall for a pull you up, pull you one of the bank executives is heading back here. Oh, all right, all right. I'm almost through. As soon as I get it in my bag. Hey, what are you doing back here, Lovett? 
Why aren't you out front? Uh, these uh, Santa Claus fellas, Mr. Peabody, j- just wanted to... Oh, what's the other one doing in the ball there? The steam water... Oh! We can answer this question later. When and if he comes to. Congratulations on your self-control. You're liable to get medals for saving your own lives. Oh, all right, let's go. I got all it. right. Let's leave these people to quiet. Wait. Oh! Statewide alarm was put out to all law enforcement agencies in a matter of minutes, but the perpetrators of the Santa Claus stick-up had vanished. Texas Ranger Jace Pearson, closest unit to the scene of the crime, was requested to investigate. The chief police gave me the general details. I'd like to get your story firsthand. Well, I I saw the guard take them through there, Ranger. I, I went back to see why he was leaving his post on the bank floor, and that, that's when I got hit. You have any idea how big they were? No, I don't. I was too excited. I see. What's your name? Leon Peabody. I'm second vice president. Well, how about the girl, Miss Keene, and the guard, Lovett? Both of them were knocked out, too. Miss Keene finally came to and we sent her home, but they took Lovett to the hospital. He, he wasn't in good shape. Skull fracture? They don't know. Oh, how come you stayed around? That's a nasty bump you've got. <laughs> I feel it, too. Plenty. Oof. But uh, I knew the police would need whatever information there is, so I stayed. Now, you better sit down. Oh, thanks. You think you could recognize either of the hold-up men? Yeah. Dressed the way they were? I'm afraid not. It's a cinch they chucked those Santa Claus suits right after they left here. I hope they left a few fingerprints. Yeah, both of them were, were wearing gloves. Oh. You get a tally on how much they made off with. Yeah, we're, we're running the tape on it. We'll know in a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. The men who pulled this job worked pretty smoothly. They seem to know the setup behind the partitions there. Have any of your employees ever been in any trouble? Those men weren't employees of the bank. No, I know they weren't. But somebody inside could have supplied them with your new layout. Helped them plan the job. Well, sir, all of our employees have been with us for at least a year, and we haven't taken on any new ones since we moved over here two months ago. Mm-hmm. Mr. Peabody. Uh, oh, yes, Donnelly. Is that the rundown? Yes, sir. 63,800. And we've got serial numbers on some of the larger bills. Good. That'll help if they try to pass any. I'll take a copy of that list. Police can alert the other banks and merchants. We'll get numbers out on the statewide and interstate. We may run down some more serial numbers when we cross-check your pocket. That'll be fine. I think you ought to go home now, Mr. Peabody. We can reach you there if you're needed. Oh, thank you. I guess I shouldn't even think about myself, though. I'm a bachelor, but the guard love it. He's got a wife and three children. Yeah. Pretty rotten Christmas present for them if he, if he doesn't pull through. I paid a call on Miss Keene, the girl who'd been slugged, but she was in a state of shock and hysteria. By nightfall, all possible angles had been checked, and we still didn't have a lead. My boss, Ranger Captain Stinson flew in, and I met him at the airport and drove into town. You talked to all the welfare agencies that have Santa Clauses stationed on the streets? Yeah, every man they have checked out clean. It was a phony setup, Captain, even though one of the bandits spent the whole day right out in the corner outside the bank. Oh, that was smart. Got the bank guard used to seeing him. Yeah. City police are checking to see if they can find out where the suits came from and who got them. Good idea. How's the bank guard doing? Love it. I checked the hospital. He's still out. No fracture, but they can't bring him around. He may have... KTXA to Unit 10. That's yours, Jason. Yeah. Unit 10. Go ahead, KTXA. City police report stolen car found in alley off Crockett Street between Maple and Molly. Navy car used in Panhandle Equity Bank robbery. Police chief requests your assistance. 10-4. Proceeding there immediately. 10-4. Unit 10, clear. We better get there fast. This may be the break we need. Here it is, Rangers. Abandoned in the alley. Prowl cars spotted it and checked the license on the stolen car list. When was it reported stolen, Chief? Early this morning. But the owner says it might have been missing since yesterday. He's been away. You check on him? Yep, he's clear. That's where he said he was. What makes you fellows think this is the car? Found this on the floor, under the seat. Big red button. Hmm. Off a Santa suit, all right. I'm going to climb in behind the wheel for a second. Ask one of the men in the prowl car to flash his light this way. Sure. 
Let's have a spotlight here, will you, boys? Okay, Chief. That do, Ranger? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, have any of your men moved this rear vision mirror, Chief? Nope. How about this front seat? You slide it back to get that button you found? No, just saw it under there and reached in and got it. What are you trying to figure, Jase? The last fellow who drove this car was pretty big. About an inch or an inch and a half taller than I am. What makes you think so? Because the seat's all the way back where it would be for a tall driver. And I have to raise myself a bit to get a clear view through the rear vision mirror. Hey, that's good thinking, Jase. Yeah, but maybe he didn't touch anything. Maybe he left the car just like it was when he stole it. I'll give odds against that. Man who's getting away from a bank stick-up wants to know what's coming behind him. All roads out of the city had been under watch since the report of the robbery, so the men we were after figured to be close by. But all we knew was that one of them was about six foot three. In the morning, we made a routine check with police headquarters. Good morning, Ranger. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Chief. Your men come across anything? I'm just going to check through this report. Tells us the location of just about every Santa Claus suit in town. All of them belong to organizations, use them for their Christmas parties. Because once in a while, they let some private individual bomb for a kid party or something, as if they put up deposit money. You got a list of the places that have loaned suits out, and who got them? That's top paper. I was just starting to check it. You look if you like. Thanks. Looks like we might be adding a murder charge to the armed robbery, Captain. Well, thank God, dead? Not yet, but it looks bad. They're operating for a blood club on the brain. He's, uh... Oh, wait a minute. What is it, Jase? I think we've got a boy to talk to. Look at this list. Two suits borrowed from two different organizations, but both borrowed by the same man, Anthony Ross, 124 Pettigrosa Street. Say, that's worth looking into, Jase. Come on. Let's pick him up. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Christmas Present, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Four Pettigrosa Street turned out to be a rundown shack on the outskirts of town. A small boy and girl, not dressed well enough against the cold, stopped playing with a mongrel dog as we drove up. They stared at us while we went up the rickety porch, the dog barking at our heels. It's all right, boy. It's all right. Take it easy. Good stuff. There's a good Yeah, what? Oh, Texas Rangers. You Anthony Ross? Yeah. We'd like to come in. Oh, sure. Annie, you and Jim take the dog and the back to the house and stay there. Look at those suit boxes, Jase. Yeah, I see them. What do you want to see me about? We can start with those boxes on the table. What's in them? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Just just a couple of packages. That's all. They, they ain't mine. You better open them up, Jase. Yeah. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I, I, I tell you, they ain't mine. You got no right to... This search them. warrant says we have... Search for Now, look. Now, the, those things ain't stolen. They were rented. A mm-hmm. couple of Santa suits, all right, Captain. And look, a button missing from the jacket of this one. I, I, I don't know what this is all about. Why, why are you coming Maybe we can refresh your memory. The guard you slugged at the Panhandle Equity Bank isn't expected to live. What? Who was wearing the other suit, Ross? Who was your partner? What are you guys doing to me? I... I, I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about the $63,000 stick-up you and somebody else pulled yesterday. And since you're about five foot ten, I can tell you that your partner's about 6'3". Rangers, you're making a mistake. I, I, I don't even know anything about a hold-up. The button missing from this suit was found in your getaway car, the one your partner drove. It wasn't me. I, I tell you, I, I didn't even know what kind of costumes were in them boxes. They ain't mine. And where'd you get them? Uh, I picked them up at, 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 at a couple of places yesterday morning. You say you picked them up, and you're trying to tell us you don't know what's in the boxes. I, I picked them up for somebody else. They were rented out in your name. The woman ordered them in my name. What woman? The one who hired me to pick them up. That's a pretty phony story, Ross. Who was this woman you're talking about? What's her name? I, I, I don't know. 
I, I don't even know. You better come with us, Ross. No, 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 no. no you you got to listen to me. Please, please listen. you you got to believe me. I, I, I was in town early yesterday morning. She, she come right up to me on the street. I, I was putting, pulling my, my kid's old wagon along trying to find some junk I might sell. You sure you don't want to think this story over before you go any further? She, she, she asked me if I wanted to earn a dollar running a couple of errands. I said, sure. A, a buck could give my kids a meal for a change. She asked me my name and address, and I told her. And then, then she told me to wait while, while she went into a booth and made some phone calls. When she come out, she, she sent me to two different clubs, told me there'd be costumes and packages. She had them left in my name to, to, to avoid confusion, she said. You didn't think that was funny? M- mister, all I could think about was earning that dollar. She, she'd give me money, deposit money for the costumes, and, and told me to come back and meet her with the stuff on that same corner. Where were you at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon? Uh, I, I was looking around for a junk again for a couple hours after I delivered the packages, and... and I guess at 2 o'clock, I was walking back home from town. It was a long walk to here in this weather. Cost of a bus ride will buy a loaf of bread for the kids you saw outside. Is that a crime? What's it to you if I walk my feet off to feed my kids? All right, Ross. That was a nice act. But there's a big hole in it. You say you delivered the Santa Claus suits to a woman you didn't know. But you've still got them. Yeah, I got them. They're going to mean a good Christmas. Yeah, but you're not going to believe what I tell you. The woman came here last night, drove up in a car, woke me up. She, she, she said she was leaving town in a hurry. They didn't have time to take the costumes back yourself, and uh, and if I take them back, I, I could keep the deposits. Fifteen dollars each. Yeah, but you're not going to believe that, are you? You better get your coat. Will you will you give me a chance to ask one of the neighbors to watch out for my kids? I'm afraid you'll be gone too long for that. I'm sorry, but we'll have to take him into the juvenile home. Oh, I guess I guess they'll get better care there than I've been able to give. I get my coat. Well, Ross, you been doing any painting around here? Painting? This place looks like it ever saw paint. What made you have that, Jason? I just noticed this inside the leg of this Santa Claus suit. Paint blob. Looks fresh. Well, how come it's inside the leg, not outside? I don't know. That's something we'll have to figure. This is the large size suit. Must have been worn by the big boy we're looking for. <laughs> the captain and I did a job we hated. Dropping the Ross kids off at the juvenile home. Sometimes it's the only thing to do. They cried for their father. Always make something inside you cry a little with him. He took Ross to the jail and locked him up. Well, that seems to be it, Rangers. By the time he comes up for trial, he should be ready to name his accomplice. That is, if we don't find him before then. I'd go along with that, Chief, if we'd found any money on him or in the house, even a few dollars. Uh, kids got under your skin, huh, Jason? They got under yours, too, Captain. You know it. Yeah, but we got to remember, that bank guard has kids, too. Hey, you got any late reports on him from the hospital? Man stationed there says the operation is over. Don't know how it's going to come out yet, though. You might as well go over there and check with the doctors, Jace. i got to get back to company headquarters. Now, do me a favor, then. You're heading toward Austin. Take the Santa outfits with you and have them sent on to the lab. Get an analysis of that paint in the trousers. Maybe some traces in the boots, too. Well, how come the boots? Well, they may be going over regular shoes. I figured that paint stain on the inside of the pants came from a blob of paint on the shoe of the man who put them on. I see. All right, Jace, you want to know the content of the paint and see if Lab can run down the source, is that it? Yeah. You were working up to some kind of a lead? Maybe. A few things I'm trying to fit together. Maybe they won't fit. If they do, though, you'll hear from me. hospital and checked with the doctors. The outcome was still in doubt. The guard's wife was there, face twisted with worry and fear. There was nothing I could do to help, so I got some sleep. Then in the morning, I went back to see the police chief. Oh, Ranger, 
stranger. I'm glad you dropped in. I just had a long-distance call from your lab headquarters at Austin. Report on that paint. Mm-hmm. Here, I wrote it all down. Paint is manufactured right here in town. Brand name is Light Glow. Light Glow, huh? Mm-hmm. Can you get a list of local painting contractors who use it? Well, I reckon just about all of them do. It's good paint, and this wouldn't hardly be Texas if it didn't deal with a local outfit, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Over to the Panhandle Equity Bank. <laughs> Mr. Peabody, do you know who painted this bank before you opened? Well, uh, there's a contract for the building included the painting. I guess that was done on a subcontract. Can you find out from the contractor? Sure, but do you mind my asking why? I told you the day of the robbery. Everything was too well planned. Like the men who did it knew the inside of the bank. Yes, I remember you saying that. You think the painters may have? Uh, that's what I think. But uh, why not some of the construction men? I've got a reason for being interested in painters. Check it for me, will you? He checked. Contractor gave the name of the painters. Two men, Eddie West and Martin Poggin. They'd been working the day of the robbery, he said, at a house on the north side of town. I went out to the house to see the owner. Well, yes, stranger. They worked here all day that day. I remember we heard the report of the robbery on the radio. They were both here all day? Yes. Didn't even go out to eat? Had their lunches with them. Hmm, kind of smelly when the house gets painted. Most women usually get out of the way. I wanted to watch them. So I was here every minute to see they didn't get sloppy. I like things neat. I see. Well, thanks, ma'am. I'm sorry I bothered you. Uh, why are you asking about them, Ranger? Nothing important. Not as long as you say they were here. Goodbye, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, then. Same to you, Ranger. Merry Christmas. <laughs> She was the alibi for Eddie West and Martin Pongan. She was too nervous about answering a few simple questions, nervous enough to make me wonder. I went back to the jail, got Anthony Ross out of my custody, and drove him to the north side of town. All right, get out, Ross. We're going in here for a minute. Why? What are you trying to frame now? I just want you to meet somebody. Back again, Ranger. I thought we'd... That's her. Ranger, that's the woman... Who is he? Who is this man? You ought to remember me, lady. My kids are in juvenile home on account of you, and I've been in jail. I never saw you before in my whole life. Tell him the truth. Tell him the truth. Hold it, Ross. Take him away from here. Go away, both of you. Ranger, I got those costumes for her. For her. You're a liar, a liar. That word fits somebody, all right. Can I come in and have a look around, ma'am? What for? What do you want? I want to check over the painting job to see if it's just new painting or if there's some new plaster under it someplace. You can't come in. You have no right. The boys you're alibying for must have come back here after they cracked the bank. Because you must have picked them up in your car after they ditched the one they're using. I don't know what you're talking about. They wouldn't carry the money on them. Did they cover it up here, safe under fresh plaster and paint until it cools no. off? No! No! I can call for a search warrant and wait till a crew comes and tears this place apart. And it'll go better for you if you don't try to cover the it. The money! Well, come on, come on. Where is it? It's... It's here, all right. In that wall. Behind the picture. Come on, Ross. Now, which one's your boyfriend? Hogan or West? Eddie. West. He said we'd get married. Go to Europe next year. You'll all go someplace next year, but it won't be Europe. West about six foot three? Yes. How did you know? I got an early Christmas present. Somebody sent me a crystal ball. So as I call the police and dig out that bank money, you're coming with us. Ranger, uh, I'm clear now, ain't I? Looks that way, Ross, but you'll have to go back to jail for a while and be checked out by the local police. That won't take any longer than it'll take me to pick up Eddie West and Martin Poggin. <laughs> I made my call, then took West's girlfriend and Anthony Ross back to jail. Hoggin and West were playing it smart, working right up to Christmas Eve like a couple of house painters would be doing. I found out where they were working, a loft of a warehouse. Local police covered the building while I went in. Eddie, who's that? Who came in? Probably the watchman. Watch out for those paint cans. Don't worry. 
I see him. That ain't the watchman's boy, Eddie. Well, Martha Sheriff's where well, we can see you. I'm coming. But seeing me isn't going to make you happy. Eddie, we have to take this ranger. Sure, Hogan, I got my gun. Hi there, Ranger. Something you want? Yeah. I want the two men who robbed the Panhandle Equity Bank. Eddie. I oh, know. What would we know about that, Ranger? I'm down off that scaffold and I'll tell you. Okay. Marty, low away. Too bad you aren't working in a place with a phone. Your girlfriend could have warned you earlier. This is your news. I'll see them. Keep your hands away. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm, I'm bleeding. Uh, it just makes you when you try to dig for that gun in your pocket. You're not hurt. We didn't do nothing, Ranger. Somebody should have told you that the real Santa Claus gives. He doesn't take. Get up and try this present I've got for you. A pair of handcuffs. up for sure, Ranger. Didn't turn out too bad either. Just heard from the hospital. Guard passed the crisis. He's going to be all right. You couldn't have better news, Chief. Just in time, too. It's getting dark. Christmas Eve. Uh, you let Anthony Ross go? Mm-hmm. About ten minutes ago. He didn't seem too happy, though. Like, just like he didn't care. What with his kids in the juvenile home and everything. Judge mightn't even release him if he can't care for him. Mm-hmm. Ross didn't have a dime, not even bus fare. It'd take him a couple hours to walk home. Oh, why didn't I think? Well, maybe it's just as well that way. Let me call the judge. And Mr. Peabody, the bank vice president. Mm-hmm. Stores uh, will be open late, won't they? Sure, sure. Why? It'll take Ross a long time to get to his house. Maybe we can get some of your boys to help us and change his mind about Christmas. Coming up the walk now. Mm-hmm. Coming slow. His tail is dry. Yeah. Not that I blame him. Are the kids asleep? <laughs> yeah. All bundled up in them new blankets. Shh. What? Ranger. And, and the chief. The, the lights. Lights. They're on. The power company turned them off. Yeah. They sent a man out to turn them on again. What? What? what, what what's all this stuff? Ornaments. Pre- Christmas trio. All those toys and things. Tomorrow's Christmas, Ross. For you and your kids. They're in the bedroom asleep. My, my kids. You, you brought my kids back to me. Yes, and there's plenty of grub in the kitchen. And you've got a job. Starting next week at the Panhandle Equity Bank. Just go in and see Mr. Peabody after the holiday. Meanwhile, he sent you a little cash in this envelope. <laughs> sort of a Christmas bonus. Just like the rest of the employees did. Yeah. We have to be going. Merry Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas, Rose. Merry Christmas, fellas. Merry Christmas. And God bless you. Thanks. God bless you. On behalf of all of us on Tales of the Texas Rangers, this is Joel McRae wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Shepard Menken, Jim Nusser, Virginia Gregg, Victor Rodman, and Byron Kane. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcock, and the program was produced and directed by Stacey Keith. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. 
Monday means music on NBC, and for your Christmas night listening pleasure tomorrow, the voice of Firestone presents soprano Eleanor Stever in a thrilling selection of Christmas melodies. Next, Jack Parr calls a Marine veteran in Japan on NBC.